Well, hi everyone. I'm Rosie Stevenson. Good night. I want to thank you all for joining us in this session as we talk about improving women's biographies on Wikipedia using Wikidata tools, experiences from women in red and the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves really quickly. Let's start at the top of the list. Uh, we'll start with you, Andrew. Uh, yes, hi, I'm Andrew Lee, also known as user Fuzz Hedo, and I'm the Smithsonian Wikimedian at large. And hi, I'm Anne Reynolds Aronce on uh, the Wiki World, and I'm in Sydney and do stuff with Women in Red and Wikidata, Commons, and so forth. Thank you, Richard. Hi, I'm Richard Nipel, a uh, user Ferris from New York, and I'm going to share a bit about uh, MBabble and some related tools. All right, and Rob. Hello, I'm Robert Fernandez. I'm on the board of uh, Wikimedia District of Columbia, and I'm here to talk about Listeria and other whatever random other stuff comes up. All right, and that circles back to me. I'm Rosie Stevenson. Good night. I edit as user Rosie Step. I'm the co-founder of Women in Red, which we'll be talking about a little bit. And I'm on the um, board of the Wikimedia Foundation. I'm one of the trustees. All right, so let's get started. Next slide, please. All right. So, uh, Wiki Women in Red was established at Wikimania in 2015. It is a multi Wikipedia language based community that focuses on improving the content gender gap, content, not editor, content gender gap, which includes women's and non binary biographies, works, and issues broadly construed. We do this by creating Wikipedia articles which turn red links into blue ones, ergo women in red. Roger Bamkin and I, the co-founders, were of the same mindset while planning for women in red. We needed a tool to measure the community's output. Are we gonna actually move the needle? Are we gonna actually make change? We knew we had to rely on Wikidata tools for that. Next slide, please. Back in December 2014, using an October 2014 DBpedia data set, Wagner and her team published a study. For the first time, it addressed a statistic. 15.53% of the biographies on English Wikipedia were about women. 13.2% on German Wikipedia, 22.6% Korean Wikipedia, and so forth. Next slide. In early 2015, um, let's see, we're on the right side. Yeah, here we go, sorry. <laughs> in early 2015, while Roger and I were making plans to launch Women in Red, we met with Max Klein, who had a measurement tool in development, Wiki, he called it, for the Wikipedia Human Gender Index, and it used Wikidata to provide statistical information regarding gender by Wikipedia language, as you can see depicted here. It gave us updates about our outcomes approximately every two weeks. Next slide, please. Once the Denalist tool was developed, we could also see the Wikidata statistical representation of English Wikipedia biographies by gender, by occupation. Next slide. In 2019, the developers of Wiki and Denales began a collaboration and voila, we now have Humaniki. It provides statistical updates by sister project by gender. What you're seeing now is a depiction about women's biographies on English Wikipedia. Next slide. 
Humaniki not only provides statistical data by Wikipedia language, but also sister projects such as Wikimedia Commons, as you can see here, and um, the, some of the Wiktionaries. So that's it for measurement tools. We're going to move forward now to info shared by the regarding Smithsonian Institution. Thanks, Rosie. Uh, and we at the Smithsonian were inspired by a lot of the work that was being done at Wikipedia. Right. So the Smithsonian actually started up an American Women's History Initiative very much in the same spirit of the Women in Red project and women scientists projects that uh, the Wikipedia community had pioneered. So this is actually a Smithsonian wide initiative, also known as AWHI, um, to create a more and just equitable American society where the role of women in history is well known, accurate, acknowledged and empowering for citizens. So this is contributing content from the Smithsonian uh, and reference material that can help improve articles in Wikipedia. That's what uh, we've been trying to support. So next slide, Richard. And part of this effort is, um, you know, doing public programming, including edit-a-thons and working with different units at Smithsonian to have their own internal staff more educated on Wikidata and Wikipedia. And we had our first crew of Wikipedia specific interns this past year. They were virtual interns and they're specifically there to work on Wikipedia content in association with the curators of the Smithsonian. So we're really proud to have that happen for the first time, uh, directly inspired by the work of Rosie and other folks in the Wikipedia community. Um, next slide, please. And one of the projects we're working on right now is called the Funk List, which is named after botanist Vicki Funk, um, who's quite notable in her own right. And this was an effort to assemble lists of women scientists that are highly notable and should have content in Wikidata and Wikipedia. So this is actually uh, a list that we have dedicated staff working on at the Smithsonian right now. But we can show you some examples later on. Next slide, Richard. Yeah, so one of, one of the tools that uh, we've, we've been working with is uh, something that we started at the, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's MBabel, short for Museum of Babel, uh, the Museum of All Possible uh, Things. Uh, it's a tool It's a, a tool for one-click creation of draft articles based on Wikidata content. Um, like I said, it was originally developed uh, for artworks. Um, so including, say, you could, you could query things like uh, artworks by the gender of the artist um, and, you know, say in, say in a particular institution. Um, it incorporates Wikidata powered info boxes. So it gives you a, a draft skeleton of an article rather than a completed article. A, 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 uh, an MBabel article by itself is not much, but it, it sort of helps create the setting and with the human element, it becomes a real article. Um, it was subsequently developed uh, further by the Brazilian community for more thematic applications, um, things like biographies, uh, even elections. They did some municipal elections in, in Brazil. Um, can be can be built on the existing Wikidata work. So if any if anything has a, a human being uh, is on Wikidata or one of their works, say an artwork or a book uh, by a human being, and say that could be sorted sorted by gender by genders, um, uh, you can apply MBabel to them and and create those articles. Um, it's been applied. There is a um, there is a specific uh, implementation of it for women in red biographies uh, developed by uh, user non modernist at uh, at George Institute of Technology. And can be integrated with any Listeria queries. For example, you could say, "Show me um, artists uh, work, works by uh, women artists or non-binary artists in museums in New York City that don't have um, that don't have a Wikipedia article yet, but have a Wikidata item, and you help create those." I think someone wants to share on the funk list in MBabel. I'm not sure if I, uh, Andrew. Yeah, so I'll explain a little bit. Uh, Mark Graham had asked about the funk list, and we actually have a partial version of that already. It's meant to be much more extensive than what exists out there. I put a link in the chat. Uh, one of the great things about this is that we can start with Wikidata, and more and more of our work uh, originates with Wikidata and getting the essential content into Wikidata. And as Richard said, he started the MBabel project in terms of creating starter templates from Wikidata for artifacts and objects. But we said, let's try this with bios. And in fact, Rob is gonna speak in a second about his work to really pioneer this, but we're benefiting from the work that Rob did in this area 
by taking Richard's work and making it applicable to women in red. So instead of clicking on a red link and being faced with a blank white page to say, now learn all of our policies and writing styles and everything to fill in that blank page, why not start them off with a skeleton? So this is what happens if you click on one of those red links in a funk list or any of the other lists that Rob will describe in a second, you will get a, if you look on the right-hand side, a info box generated out of Wikidata, which you can tell by those distinctive pencil icons next to it. And you will get um, not great prose, but at least the starter prose for an article, which I think really gets you pretty far down the um, path of making a good article. So I want to pass it off to Rob since he did a lot of the hard work on this uh, to describe Listeria, which is the next slide after this. All right, so hi, um, Listeria. So of course, um, the goal of this is to make uh, the information, make topics and people discoverable by using the metadata to spur the creation of articles. That's why we're here, of course. Um, using, you know, we're all familiar with making a manual list to uh, spur article creation, whether it's in person or an online event, and um, you do all that work, and after the event, the unused data just goes away. And one of the things that really spurred me on to um, do this kind of work is an event that we had at a um, the Sumner School, which is the archive of the Washington, D.C. Uh, public school system. And I did a lot of preparatory work for, like, gathering information about, um, you know, early 19th and early 20th century people that worked for the school system that didn't have Wikipedia articles. And we went to the event, and it was great. You know, the event was great, and it was a success, but, like, three, art three of those people in the list of articles. So what do you do with the rest of that data? And so we want to put that, we want to get that data in Wikidata, because you will... The point of this Listeria tool is to make real, is to make automatically updating, um, automatically generated and automatically updating lists instead of manual lists that need to be created manually and maintained manually. And um, the great thing about that is, of course, that um, even if no one uses it, this list, even if nobody uh, writes any articles based on the list, that data is still in Wikidata and that article in it and the, that data enriches Wikidata. But I obviously the, the one of the main reasons we do this work is to make this information discoverable for people that are writing articles. And so it does require a lot of work on the front end from some experienced editors. And if you um, are interested in the nuts and bolts of Listeria, which is a bit beyond the scope of this panel, um, there's a little, uh, and sorry to get meta, have a meta presentation that mentions another presentation, but uh, there's a Listeria presentation that I created for a group of non-experienced um, Wikipedia and Wikidata editors. So it should be a piece of cake for those of us who have, a lot, those of you who have a lot of experience with uh, Wikidata and Wikipedia. So uh, check that out if you are interested in um, how the templates exactly work. Um, but I want to talk about more about uh, the larger issues here. So, of course, obviously, to make one of these lists work, all the items have to be in Wikidata. That seems pretty obvious. But and if they're not in Wikidata, well, put them in Wikidata, and then that, that's a that's a win win for everyone else. Um, however, sometimes it's this is a lot harder than it looks because these Listeria lists are generated by Sparkle queries. But there's two technical problems that um, need to be addressed by your Sparkle query. One is that you need to avoid timeouts. Because when you're looking for a large amount of information, such as say, let me, you know, give me all the women's, you know, neuroscientists who don't have or Wikipedia that aren't articles yet, that might be a very large set, and that might time out. So you need to optimize your Sparkle query to avoid timeouts. Also, you need to make your Sparkle query um, advanced enough to gather everything that you want that might not be represented in Wikidata the way that you want. Um, because we know that ideally a query should be like, well, give me all of this. Well, what if this is not modeled the way you expect it to be in Wikidata, or there's mi there's incomplete items, or there's missing items, or et cetera. Let me give you an example um, that I thought of from 2018. We were working on the uh, women in red list for cartoonists. And once I talk about this, I'll circle back and describe the women in red lists. But uh, we were trying to get that women in red list cartoonist right. 
Um, so great, yeah, pull everyone in Wikidata who's a cartoonist, great. Well, it's not that simple because um, there are, there are um, some of them are represented by occupation comics artists, some of them are represented by occupation cartoonists, some of them are represented by uh, occupation mangaka, um, some of them, and then we also had a large number of items from the Lambic that were pulled in, thousands of cartoonists were pulled into Wikidata from the Lambic Comiclopedia, but some of those items weren't developed and didn't even have occupations yet, so we needed to pull all those items as well. So it took five people, and some of the very experienced Wikipedians, um, five people collaborating together back in the conference in 2018 to try to get this, this uh, one query to run correctly to get that list. So it is getting a bit daunting. And so the problem, you know, and we're running into a lot of problems with Listeria. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so sorry. Um, but we're running into a lot of problems with Listeria. So this, we're concerned, and I'll, um, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Well, we're concerned that it, the problems are making this so difficult that it might deter a newer contributor and less experienced contributors from working with these kinds of lists. But um, briefly, I want to describe, and I forgot to initially describe what I'm talking about. What are these lists? Well, if you go to um, the shortcut on the English Wikipedia, you'll see a page with links to probably over 100 or so um, lists for various categories. And there's an example of it on the slide there. And um, these are lists of people or of women who don't have Wikipedia articles in particular categories. Uh, the largest group of categories is cartoon is um, occupations, like the cartoons list I mentioned. But there's a number of other lists, lists of by country. Um, one of the things I'm working on in particular is lists of uh, from reference books, because I know that many of us um, are completists and we want to go down the list and make sure everything's in there. So I'll go in there and uh, go to a reference book, um, make sure every connected, make sure everyone's in Wikidata, um, put in a described by source item for that list, for that reference book in each item, and then we bam, we get a Listeria list, and then people can go through and write articles for everyone who's in that reference book who doesn't have a an article yet and and the advantage of a list like that is you have a ready and e a source that you can easily go to the internet archive or wherever this material is and um, you know you and there you go there's a source for your uh, for your new article uh, one of the things that i want to mention briefly before we move on um the, that one of the things that uh i'm proudest of working on this this year is i work with a, a number of ed other editors on the dictionary of women worldwide which has 25,000 entries. And so that took a lot, a, a several months working with a number of other dedicated women in red editors on this. And we went through systematically, pulled out all the, you know, some folks pulled out all the ones that already had English Wikipedia articles. We had to match um, the people with the people of Wikidata, create new items. And I'm afraid uh, there's still a number of duplicates um, in Wikidata that we're still working on merging. That's on me. That's all my fault. Um, but, you know, we had to address um, different spellings, you know, and, and all this kind of thing and make sure that all these people were matched correctly. Anyway, I'll stop talking about that, but it's, it's um, and move on to um, the, the technical limitations really quickly. Um, and then we can move on to the next slide after that. Sorry. Um, so the technical limitations is just to wrap up. Um, Listeria, we're having some problems with Listeria. And uh, this is a tool that was created by Magnus, whom we all know and um, know and love. And um, none of nothing I'm about to say is a criticism of him, but um, we're having a lot of problems with the, the bot lately. And it's um, some lists are not updating. Some lists are just uh, the bot is choking on these uh, on the, the data. And so we don't know what's going on, and um, it has a lot, but it does have a lot of implications for the long-term success of this project um, and projects like this. Because, um, you know, what if the tool goes away, or what if it stops working and there's no one to maintain it? And so, really, it, it goes to the larger issue of like when there's tools that are independently created and maintained, but the entire community depends on them. That maybe. They should become part of the infrastructure and be supported by um, the foundation or the folks who work on uh, Wikidata or um, or in some other way. And so that is just something to think about. 
And so um, long term is to address that. And then to um, a lot of these lists, we want to incorporate Richard's creation and Babel into the list in the long term. And that is on our wish list. And um, I'm going to wrap that up so we can go to the next slide. And um, thank you for listening. Andrew? Andrew, I think you're sharing about Smithsonian Open Access. I mean, I'll be glad to talk about those three. Yeah, some more. <laughs> someone want to share about Smithsonian Open Access? I don't know if all members can do that. Andrew, if you're trying to talk, your mic is muted. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he's the only one um, on the panel who's worked on this specific aspect of it. Um, so we might have to s skip over this. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some look at um, right. Mary Lincoln's dress and and the uh, its creator, uh, Elizabeth Keckley, and there's this. Um, there's this what, one um, one thing we should mention about the last item is that like it's great that the Smithsonian has. Um, release this as CCO because it is a three-dimensional object and so we wouldn't be able to put a, that kind of picture on commons unless someone you know volunteer went and took that picture or the Smithsonian donates it so that is a great thing that they've done is put a lot of their stuff made a lot of their stuff usable for our projects in that way yeah can you hear me okay or no yeah oh, there, you, there you are right, there he is. okay thanks a lot uh, <laughs> sorry about that I have to reload Arden, so glad to hear she used uh, Arden's using the dress as a discussion example in your classes. Oh my, you've got to see this then. All right. So we had this list. I mean, so we had this dress released under CC0, which is great. If you go to the next slide, Richard, this is best experience, especially if you have a mobile phone. If you scan that QR code, especially if you're on an iPhone, on an Android, it takes a little bit more work if you want to scan that QR code, but you will get the live uh, wiki data knowledge graph for that. Um, for that set of items there. I'll put the link also into the chat if people just want to click on that. And what's really cool about that is you can actually drag the nodes around, you can interact with it. And this is just a good example of how this one dress, which you can see right there um, in the middle, the purple dress, um, you know, is interlinked into the fabric of knowledge that we have on Wikidata. So even we were discovering things we didn't even know about Elizabeth Keckley through Wikidata. So Elizabeth Keckley, you can see there, was the creator of that dress, was a confidant of Mary Todd Lincoln. So obviously she was in the White House quite a bit. And after she retired, um, she actually wrote a kind of a scandalous book at the time called Behind the Scenes. It was kind of like a tell-all book of her experience in the White House. Um, and it was quite a sensation at the time. And you can see that we actually have information about that in Wikidata saying it, the main subject is abolitionism, dressmaking, it's an autobiography. Um, but something we discovered as well is that Elizabeth Keckley was actually a character in an opera by Philip Glass, which is really interesting. We had no idea. And that's the benefit of Wikidata being the sum of all databases, right? It's not just an arts database, it's not just a fashion database, not just an um, opera database. It's the sum of all these things. And you're seeing these connections in the ways that you really never knew before, or at least we never knew before. Um, and then you can also, just for Smithsonian's sake, you can see other things in the collection. So for example, um, these slippers made by Keckley are held by the new Museum of African American History and Culture, whereas the dress is held by the American History Museum. So even within the Smithsonian, it's really interesting to see these connections that are not easy to discover just with Smithsonian's own internal systems. So next slide, Richard. Oh, and Arden said, yeah, she's the subject of a historical fictional novel. That's right. We took some of those notes out of the graph to make it easier to see, but you're absolutely right. There's some really interesting other connections there. Yeah, I might just share a bit about uh, about translations. Uh, so, of course, the first application of Wikidata, and I think 2012, was to, sh was to store the, the different uh, language editions of a, of a particular subject, whether that's a person or, or a concept. Um, so you might ask how my biographies and, and various language Wikipedia editions be used in translation tools and access and listeria, listeria listings um, and what's the current status of the machine machine tool machine translation tools. Uh, so the main tool is the content translation tool. 
Um, it can query articles in any class uh, that have been untranslated. So something that, that we've done that's uh, with, with the Met Museum and I think others have done as well is just looking at articles of a particular class, say um, artists that fit a certain criteria, um, concluding by gender, um, and art works by those artists, um, and, and see if they're in one language, but if they're not in another language. So all the, all the articles or the artists say that are not in Spanish or are not in Persian. Or, or not in English, um, and say they might be tied to a gender or to a, a collection. Um, of course, machine translations must be human edited. This is um, <laughs> this is Wikipedia after all. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a very handmade project. Um, but there has been some contention about exactly. Um, of course, we don't accept pure machine translation, but we have tra machine translation as as a step, and that has been. It's possible on most Wikipedias as a destination language, but it is not possible on all Wikipedias. Um, and it's been disabled um, entirely, which I think is uh, oh, stepping too far on, unfortunately, on English Wikipedia, on German Wikipedia, on Italian Wikipedia, last time I checked. Um, and it might be worth revisiting because um, it is a useful tool um, and machine translation has improved somewhat. And we do have uh, these safeguards. So for example, there has to be a certain percentage of the of the article that has to be that has to be hand changed after the machine translation because we don't accept pure machine translation or even anything close to it. Um, and perhaps with some extra safeguards as well, it could be enabled on English Wikipedia and some of the other places where it's not enabled uh, as well. And we can help build up some of these articles as, as we as we you know consciously go through to see which articles, particularly uh, gender diversity relevant articles, are missing in the different languages. And I think we want to talk about the Wikidata Edit Framework. And Anne can share about that. So, um, I know this has been around for a while, but um, I thought it was just a good um, thing to, to do as a refresher, if you like. Um, here's the article on Mildred Inks da Davidson Dalrymple, what a mouthful. Um, and down on the left hand side, you can see where the Wikidata Edit Framework sits on a Wikipedia article page. And I've expanded it on the right. And obviously, because we're dealing about women's bios, we would want you would want to click the person uh, um, link. But next, please. Before you go happily creating uh, new um, item, Wikidata items, please go to Wikidata and check whether they're already there. And um, it was mentioned earlier, this problem of um, duplicates. Um, you need to check the full name, the known as names, um, you know, drop some of the middle names out. Um, and only when you're satisfied that you've drawn a blank, then you go back and you use the framework in Wikipedia. Next, please. So this is what it looks like for a person. Now, I've already um, added some more extra information, but basically when the framework pops up, uh, it auto fills the label from the name of the article. And because you click person, it auto fills instance of human. Now, um, I've added a description uh, because it's always helpful to have a description and short description on Wikipedia articles. Um, I've added various aliases. Um, and for women in red and other statistical purposes, I have added her sex or gender as being female. And uh, because she uh, lived and died in the US, I have put her country of citizenship as United States of America. Um, one caution, what I've added, I have not put references on. So if I want to add I references, I click the save and that puts all that, all those entries into a Wikidata item. And then I could go to Wikidata and look at my contributions, click on the most recent one, which will be Mildred's um, entry, and then I can add any other extra information I like. You will see that there are lots of other tabs at the top of the framework where you could add other information. But basically, if I'm just looking at 
helping with women in red statistics, this is the bare minimum of information I um, contribute to Wikidata to do that. Um, so where do you get the framework? Uh, next, please. So um, you, I uh, had it installed on my English Wikipedia, but then I discovered when I was preparing for today that it actually exists in Meta. So I've put the um, uh, URL for it into the chat and you would go to this page and select all, select all the code for JavaScript and notes and copy it and then uh, next. You, um, this is my um, global JavaScript page, which didn't exist. You then click create if that's the situ your situation too. Um, and next. And here I have pasted the script in and saved, published the changes, and you can see it all in place. All you need to do is refresh your browser to clear the cache and then it will be ready for you to deploy across Wikipedia. And um, good luck, um, but don't do what I did. I created a whole batch of your duplicates before someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, please don't do that. So hence my warning earlier on. Thank you, that's me done. Great, well, thanks so much for um all those great insights and these are the ways you can reach us i mean those are our ids there i think our opening slide we can also go back to that we have all our usernames in case any of you want to um contact any of us so come to oops oh yeah so yeah feel free to come to any of the events that we have as part of women in red or any of the partner institutions like the smithsonian uh, Women in Red is a very active project. The talk page is the central coordination point, right, Rosie, where most of the stuff right. happens. I'm going to drop a link for you in, in just, a, just a moment here. And the thing I loved about Anne's uh, demoing of that tool is, you know, you, you said it was an old tool that people, I had never heard of this tool before. So I learned a lot just by listening to you to describe that tool. And that's what's so amazing about our community and our ecosystem that no two people have the complete knowledge about all the different tools and techniques that we have. And every Wikidatacon, I learn a lot about these things. So um, it's, it's a great sharing. I think the other session here by Vera de Kock had a, a great rundown, a lot of gadgets and tools that um, I think were always good to, to kind of replenish our tool belt with these different types of things. Um, but I, I'm interested in like uh, Rob and Richard, like what kind of directions do you think MBabel could go into from where you see it right now? We've kind of moved it from skeleton articles about objects to now maybe bios, but were there some other ways that it could be used or what? Well, I just wanted to say briefly, I don't know if I, I, I talked about this, but we'd like to, in the long term, we'd like to move all the women in red uh, Listeria lists to MBabel and use that. And we've already done that locally. And what I mean by locally is like all of our local events, we try to uh, have a Listeria generated list that uses MBabel um, to create that skeleton article. So I think like, I really think that this, this is, this tool is the future for, for in-person events and, and maximizing um, the efforts of new volunteers. I really think this has a lot of potential and needs to be uh, employed in that way. Is um, and so now that I've said my piece, uh, what do you think? Where do you think this is going, Richard? Yeah. So one thing that that the Black Lunch Table group has been doing um, uh, the last couple of years, and I think is might, might be more broadly applicable, is is just having a listeria query of people on on their list on their uh, data list who are uh, who are in an, who are either lived in. Or were educated at, or worked at something in a particular geography. So when they do a local editathon, so that's something that, of course, can be can be applied. Um, and it might be interesting to look at, you know, um, that for a future future editathon, say particularly in person. It might be interesting to look at, um, you know, maybe more specialized things for biographies. 
um, you know, as, as, you know, because of course, biography is a very generic thing. <laughs> um, so if there are ways to, to make a template that's more useful, say for someone who's a writer or for or someone who's an artist and give that some, give that some thought, maybe that would involve, you know, more layers of things, but it, it might, it might be interesting. Um, it yeah. is, it is particularly valuable if there's, if there, especially if when you're in the room with someone, it, it, it has a, a, some greater utility perhaps. But speaking of ge geography, if I could hijack that for a second, a yeah. geography is really hard to do because a lot of times the information is just not there in Wikidata. Like, you know, their, their, their country might be there, but like their place of birth might be there. But if they were born in like Nebraska, but they're really known as a Kentucky writer and no one puts that Kentucky in there because it's not their date of, it's not their birthplace, it's not their death place, then that might not be um, pulled in by a geographic query. Uh, what I've done locally is, I don't know if um, you might have seen or participated in my um, Wikimedia DC's uh, contest this summer, uh, 100 DC Women, and that's what I've, um, and we have a, and I created an MBabble a listeria list for that but the way i had to do that was i had to just tag each article individually and that was um that and i and i've been doing that for like a year and that's really laborious but it's really the only way i could figure out to get like to grab that consistent geographical scope that i wanted when the data was just not there so that's something that they might, and I'm probably, I'm sure Black Lodge Table has thought of issues like this, but that's that's one thing to consider is just look, just tag everything with part of this project. You know, it's clunky, but it gets the job done. Yeah, and I think what's interesting is there are some other presentations at Wikidatacon around different projects all kind of building towards the same type of goal. There is the article placeholder presentation um, there's the, also wiki functions, right? Wiki functions does something in the same domain of trying to generate text based on um, algorithms, right? Not AI, but algorithms. So it's interesting that we are all kind of looking at at least uh, the general idea of getting people jump started better, right? Rather than staring at a blank page, which is always intimidating. Uh, and feel free to put in questions into the chat, folks. We do have a little bit of time, and this is the last session of the day, so we don't have to be too squeezed by uh, the next uh, folks coming around. Yeah, we can, um, just, we can do this all night. Yeah, exactly. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> or day, depending on what time zone you're in. <laughs> but just to enunciate some of the stuff that we said in the chat, you know, the stereo, it's both, a, it's mainly a technical thing, but it's also a person power thing, right? It's not fair to put all of this on top of Magnus to, Oh, absolutely not. And I hope that and he's we... got like two dozen tools he's he's getting bug reports for. So right, but absolutely. it does it does yeah, make like a better way point. for our community. Oh sorry. Yeah. I no, apologize no, for talking over you. No, go ahead. But no, I was just gonna this is really this when a tool is that important, it really should be part of the infrastructure. So Magnus wouldn't shouldn't shouldn't have to maintain it himself. Right. And then maybe the, someone in the foundation or, um, you know, uh, De Deutschland or whoever needs to, to, to take ownership of and have some, like, dedicated help with that. And I know they have a long list of things to do, but there's a lot of things that need doing in this community one way or another. So, you know, we just we do what we can. But... Right, right. As you said, there there's a new content partnerships hub that is being done out of Wikimedia Sweden. So one of their... Uh, their charges, I think, is to look at all the tools and identify the critical ones that we can prioritize those things. Um, Rosie, what are some reflections on directions, ne new directions or next directions for women in red? What kind of things do you think they want to address going forward? Well, there's a couple of things that I've been um, speaking with a few people about. And one of them is that we have over 800 red lists. Um, on the Women in Red Red List Index, and I'd like to see all of those have a Wikidata item. And the reason for this is so that other communities who are doing similar work out there, the Italian Wikipedia, Spanish Wikipedia, Swahili Wikipedia, can add a link to their version of the Red List for um, women mayors of Spain. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things we'd like to see as part of the campaigns work that's being done. And I've spoken to some of the campaigns people about it, and it's on their radar. It's not something they can work on immediately, but they understand that that's, you know, something that might be important. Right, right. 
And Anne, how about you? What kind of things are you looking forward to to uh, addressing going forward on women's biographies? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I think uh, personally, um, it's I get very distracted by all the. Um, um, I, 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 although I've created a number of articles, uh, I get a lot of I get quite distracted by all the um, tidying up round about. Um, I don't really have anything particularly to say except that I, if I set myself a task to, you know, write so many bios a week, that would probably be a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. But that's very specific to me, not um, <laughs> not the project, although it does whittle away at the um, the red list names. But, but I think related to that, and also what I know Rosie does all the time, when you're using... Um, you know, reference material that may not be digitized yet, right? I know, Rosie, you've in the past oh, bought yeah. books and worked right off of books. We have in the chat Mark Graham from Internet Archive offering to digitize any books that we need. If you may know that they have a they have an immense digitizing facility at the Internet Archive, and he's always asking me and other folks, what books do you need? We'll buy it. We'll digitize it, put it online. You can borrow it with digital online lending, and you can use it. And so... So he's got a hammer, he's looking for nails, and if we can supply the nails or at least the requests for books, he'll fulfill it. So that's a great resource to have. And I thank you, Mark. He's Yeah, absolutely. And I will be books. glad to make as many Listeria book lists for all the books you can buy. So <laughs> So maybe we should um, you know, plan to talk about this. Um, you know, Mark and I have been I'm chatting uh, a week or so ago that we need to have a call and we're, we're going to talk further about this. I wanted to add one more thing as far as what are we looking at doing and or what do we need? What kind of tool do we need? So I spoke about three different measurement tools that Women in Red has used and one that we're using now, Human Nikki. But the thing about Human Nikki is it only counts the articles on English Wikipedia, for example, about women's biographies. And what isn't being counted are the articles about women's works, the paintings they painted, the sculptures they sculpted, the conferences they convened, the novels they wrote. And it doesn't account for articles related to women's issues and women's health, uh, women's suffrage and so forth. So I think we need a new tool for that something that can give us the statistical representation of what do we have, what don't we have, what do we, what kind of goals we might have. So um, if someone is keen on looking into doing that kind of work, you know, I'd really be happy to talk about that kind of a tool with you. That sounds great. And uh... We uh, hope we can supply Mark with a lot more things to put on his work list in that regard. So thanks so much, everyone. We need to wrap up this session, but I will encourage you, there is a social room for Wikidatacon. It's in the left-hand column under our partners above all the rooms there. And that is a wonder me um, kind of social space where you can wander around and make little chat groups, which is really cool. So I encourage you to go there um, after the session, after hours. I think some of us will be going there if you want to talk more. So I think that's it. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And thanks, panelists, for your insights. Thanks, everybody. And thanks and for sticking it out with us if you're in some time zone where it's now past 11 p.m. Thank you. Everyone. Happy end of the day for Wikidatacon Day 2. All right, people. Thank you very much. I'm maybe recording right now.